Season six. Yeah. This is a wild ride. Yes. When you look at kind of the five that came before it and then this one, where does this stack up for you? Oh my goodness. Most of the time when it feels the hardest, it means it made for the best television. So you guys are going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I do think that when we're stacking, I, I personally think this is probably our best season. I'm gonna say it is too. Okay, see, I'm not even just saying that. You like that fuse, boom! Two newbies this year. Yes. We'll start with Brie. Great, <laughs> love it. Were you surprised at the conversation that happened around her, especially Chelsea's involvement in the conversation? Oh my gosh, it makes me so uncomfortable because I genuinely love these girls so much. Chelsea's been super supportive of me and my untraditional situation. I think that Brie and Chelsea kind of uh, started things off on the wrong foot and that didn't help, let's to say the least. Yeah, it seems there were conversations happening and not with each other that needed to happen. Correct. The other newbie, who I think you're going to be less excited to talk about, mm. Nicole. Uh huh. We see you activated like never before this season because of Nicole. One thing I have a problem with is a victim mentality, and it's not all about you. If a Annie victim is, mentality? Yes. Is. I will f I've been through so much, First and all, I don't, don't even call me f how you f You are a f and you've been a f Wow. Yeah. OK. Why did she push you to that place? I think at this point, having gone through all I've been through with you know the Oppenheim group and filming Selling Sunset, I think I had expected a little bit of respect with someone coming new into the group. And she had reached out and we were great friends before this and I thought I was excited for her. She asked for advice and I was trying to help her. So the fact that she had been plotting a plan and I didn't know it until here she was with a full camera crew around me, obviously that just set the tone because I don't like feeling like you've been plotting something and it's something from so long ago. You could have easily brought this up a million times before. So I just had very little patience from the beginning. <laughs> so there are things that I would have put up in the past because I just wanted everything to be copacetic. But now I feel like, like I said, I've been here too long and I'm too tired. I, I am not the one. If you want your, you know, TV moment, go somewhere else because I'm not going to be an easy target anymore. Yeah, that uh, brings us to an Instagram post you made around the time of uh, filming. Yes, okay. I'm going to read the full verbatim Please of what you posted. The thirst for camera time on season six is real. Wow, that was insanity, but also so transparent. Get your 15 minutes, girl, but leave my business out of it. Clown emoji. Of course, you have a huge issue with me now, not before, when you have a camera crew around you. Some side eye faces, it looks mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. I hate fake poop emoji. If you want camera time, just say that. I would have helped you get the right angle, shrug. We only saw a part of that argument. Yes. So is anything missing that the viewers need to know about? Well, actually, you know, because they don't like to break the fourth wall, a lot of my frustration is that, you know, if I, you know, when you got cast on the show and you're asking me for advice and I'm saying, I'm so excited for you, you know, all these things. And then all of a sudden you're bringing up something from three years ago. Um, that to me is extremely frustrating, especially, like I said, leave my business out of it is, you know, calling me a fake agent, trying to tear down my business, things I've worked really hard for. I'm the only girl in the office that has given her business and that has given her uh, referrals. And so it just really felt like uh, a betrayal and a clown emoji. She sets this up by saying she's a little frustrated that you got credit on the MLS for sales that she completed. Correct. When you and Mary sit down with her to finally hash this out, she says, well, I should have never said that to begin with. So did you ever learn what her actual issue was or did she present an actual issue other than that? Yeah, because she's also on the listing and both of us were added, first of all. So it's ridiculous if you're added. Okay, I, I digress. <laughs> um, but yes, you're right. She says that wasn't her initial issue. And then she came out with her issue saying that Jason only put me on the listing because he had a crush on me. Which again isn't much of a point when he's adding you to way more listings than me and you guys also dated. So 
I never got to the root of what her real problem was. She kept bringing up, you know, how, you know, I, I didn't let him answer phone calls when we were together, which they cut this out, but I, I said that to Jason in front of everyone. Have I ever done that? And he said, no, that's ridiculous. So to me, I think it's very clear there wasn't a point. She came in with a plan. She thought she had this, you know, idea to kind of come at me. And I think that I surprised her because I just, you know, I'm in a different place and I wasn't having it. And I was not an easy opponent. Do I, you know, do I think that I could have, you know, done anything di differently? Yes. But, you know, when you when you keep bringing it, it's almost like, you know, don't keep poking me and then not expect me to react. Right. So safe to say what you put in those Instagram stories still kind of rings true today. A hundred thousand percent. <laughs> then there's the Palm Springs weekend. <laughs> the drug test. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, full panel drug test. What? Uh, why, why would you do that? Those are very severe and extremely damaging accusations. Even though they're let a me thousand percent Mary. false and let no me, one vali Let me validate this piece of paper. One, when you heard about the drug test, what did you think? And two, did she ever actually provide the results of it? I have not seen them, but again, I think that this was something that it could have been something um, I, I, I think that that kind of made it a bigger deal. Uh, by contacting a, an attorney and all of those things. So um, when you really now are at someone's throat, then it almost like is going to just hype everything up. Um, to me, it's, girl, you do what you wanna do. I actually don't care. I'm not policing anything. My point is just stop coming for my business. What is the issue? Why are you so, like a rabid dog with a bone? So is, is it that? Is it, you know, is it camera time? Is it, you know, whatever. Of course, when I, if I say camera time, they're not gonna use that. Right. We can use it here on ET. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this only snowballs into season seven. Yes. So is it today in this moment, are you better or worse off with her? So, um, no, we are not friends. Um, I think that, you know, so many things have happened at this point. I'm fine with that. But obviously, like I said, it would be nice at this point to just kind of be not trying to tear down each other's business. I'm here to say she's great at what she does. I'm never trying to tear her business down. Um, but our personalities clash. So I'd like if we can keep it to that, I think that's actually a great place if we can get there. All right. I think before we can get there, we're going to see a lot more. That, that is true. In this now, I say that right after I just uh, right. said the cloud emoji. Well, you know what? This is see. This is what happens that we have to answer the question. This is the machine it's that just, keeps it going. It's just going in the. <laughs> you can say it. We'll bleep it. When Michelle gets away with murder. I say one thing, and I'm burned to the stake for it. You've said horrific things about me. Everything I say about okay. you is. Hold on. I need to pause. No, really right stop. Now. Or I'm gonna end you. In the sneak peek we get at the end of season six, we hear her say that you get away with murder. Mm-hmm and then she threatens to end you. Yes. So what can you tell me about kind of those moments? I think it's funny that she thinks she can. Very clearly she came in with an agenda and now that it didn't work, she's twisting it around as if she's the victim and I've been out to get her. When really the whole time I'm like, please go away. What What is your point? I kept trying to get to it and I never found one. So it's kind of, it's an old playbook. I've seen it before. I've dealt with it before. You're coming at me. That didn't work. And now all of a sudden you're the victim that, you know, is going to act like you're getting bullied. It's it's literally happened before. Right. So. Which is why I think we're seeing an, you handle it differently this time because you've seen this movie before. You know yeah. how it ends. Christine, this is enough. I'm leaving. Don't do this again to me. You know, if you're going to try and um, do something that's already been done on the show, then you have to try and do it better. You can't, you know, listen, Christine and I have our issues, but the one thing I will always give her, you know, she really um, sold it on different aspects. And I feel like, you know, you can't come in with an old playbook and, and it's a little. Right. The sequel's got to be better than the original. There you go. Between the fallout with Nicole, figuring out your new uh, normal post-Jason breakup. Mary often chose the side that wasn't yours or tried to stay neutral. Where do you two find yourselves now? Is there a friendship there and how different is it from what it used to be? 
I love this question because that's the one thing that is important to me to clear up is that there's absolutely a friendship there. There will always be a friendship there. I love Mary. And, um, you know, I don't even feel like she took a side that wasn't mine. I really do feel like, you know, she really is that friend that wants to stay neutral. And of course, when you're going through something, it feels a certain way, but I, that is how life goes. And I think that, um, you know, we have a friendship where no matter how much time does pass, the second we talk and connect, it's, it's like no time has passed. And so um, I love Mary. I'm so happy for her with everything she has going on. And I, you know, I feel like with the show, we had to kind of conversations that would have maybe had quicker, they want us to wait. And so it, it does feel good to finally be able to get to a place where, you know, um, they wanted to have that in real time. But now, you know, that we are done filming to really work on just getting our friendship exactly back where it was. And it, and, and it is, which I'm really excited about.